Good Tuesday morning, everyone. I hope you had a good day yesterday, and I'm praying that you and I have good days today. What's a good day? That's one where we spend it with the Lord, and he comforts us and leads us, encourages us, all those things. And what a way for you to start the day right here with inspiration for today. And I pray that that's exactly what it does for you, inspires you on to have a great day. Hey, this week, we are studying the parables of Jesus, at least all of those found in Matthew chapter 13. And the one we come to today, which is actually the first one uh, listed, is called the parable of the farmer and the seeds. This is one that I know you've heard sermons on, but I also know you probably haven't thought about it in a while. And you and I are going to look at it today. There is so much divine truth. And that's what Jesus, when he gives parables, they're stories that contain divine truth. And he tells them so that you and I can remember them. And this is one you will remember. Chapter 13, and actually it's starting in verse 3. And it says, he told many stories in the form of parables such as this one. Listen. A farmer went out to plant some seeds, and he scattered them across his fields. And then he tells, Jesus tells, about where those seeds went. And he lists four places. Four places. One was on the footpath, and the birds ate them. One was on shallow soil, and the plants started quickly but they withered because there was no deep root system. The third was that some fell among the thorns and thorn bushes and the weeds. And those just got choked out and failed to grow. And then the fourth was that some seeds fell on fertile ground and those produced an abundance of fruit. There's a lot there. And if we didn't have an explanation for it, then we might not have figured it out correctly. Now, this being the first parable in Matthew 13, Jesus is kind enough to explain it. We don't have to guess in this one what these items mean because Jesus tells us. If you have your Bible open and you're reading along, we're going to drop down to verse 18 of Matthew 13, okay? They wanted to know what this meant. And so Jesus says, verse 18, now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. So he's going to tell us. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Now, that sentence actually tells us what the seeds represent. Did you catch it? He says, those who hear the message about the kingdom. The message about the kingdom. That is what the seeds represent. And so, whenever we tell people about the Lord, or we talk about spiritual truth, or we let them know about Jesus going to the cross. All of those type things are the messages about the kingdom of God. In essence, when we tell others about the Lord, you and I are planting seeds. We're planting seeds. And that carries right through. That's really what God calls us to do, isn't it? We can't make anyone believe. But we, you and I, can continue to tell people about the Lord. And just that act is being successful because that's what God asks us to do. But the fact is, 
when we do that, we're scattering our seed, the seed of the, of the truth of the kingdom. It, it does have different results. And this, this is the first one. So he says, the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the, and they don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. So sometimes we, we tell people about the Lord or talk about him and what he's done in our life. And it's, and it's, and it says Satan comes along and snatches away that message, takes it away in many different forms. Maybe he just doesn't remind them and, he, and they just forget about it. But it doesn't bear fruit. The second seed, verse 20, the seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and they immediately receive it with joy. And many times, I've seen every one of these many times and I know you have also. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. I've seen many people start with enthusiasm. Sit in the front row at church. I don't know how many times I've had people come and they're so excited about the Lord and they sit in the front row and they sing loud, they raise their hands, whatever it is. And they might do that for a month and then I never see them again. Hey, something has taken that joy of the Lord away. And Jesus says that that's often because they, they may have problems. I thought everything would work out. Being a Christian only means that God helps us through things, but things do come into our lives, don't they? But many people don't understand that. Or persecution, he says. The seed, then verse 22, the seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word. And there's another thing, it's God's word, the Bible. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth. So no fruit is produced. Some people hear the word. It grows a little bit. And then the cares of this world, perhaps, and Jesus even used this illustration, the pursuit of wealth. But it can be the pursuit of a lot of things. Chokes it out and they forget about it. And they go their own way. He does mention that the seed also represents God's word. So as we share, it falls on different soils. But verse 23, the seed that fell on the good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. I know when I read those, what's the first thing you ask? I want to make sure that my life and my heart are in the good soil category. Then it says, those who truly hear and understand God's word. And, we, and then that produces fruit. What's fruit? Well, it's working and living life with the Lord, sharing him whenever possible. Fruit might be serving in a ministry at church. It might be taking your neighbor who can't drive anymore to the store. Who, there's so many different kinds of fruit. It might be leading somebody to, to know Jesus. Wonderful. It might mean inviting them to church where you know they'll hear the gospel. So fruit can be in, in many different forms, but at all glorifies the Lord. And as we <clears throat> live life with him, we're planting seeds, telling people about Christ. That's what he asks us to do, be fishers of men. God bless. Walk closely with the Lord. We'll see you for another parable tomorrow. Bye-bye. Come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him